Sam again from Bentley Systems, continuing now in our fourth video in the series on the Import Points VBA. Now, this is a very cool VBA. Behind me is the webpage where you can go get it. There'll be a link down below where you could click and download it. Make sure your CAD admin people are cool with you adding a VBA, has all the instructions. Now, in this video, what we're going to look at is the points method. Now, Behind me is the VBA dialog, and you can see there's different output two options. The one we're going to look at is called points. And this one, we're going to be placing in points from a CSV file that are 3D. It's got horizontal and vertical. So let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we're going to be using the import points VBA to import data that is going to place points, zero length line, at its horizontal, northing and easting, and its elevation value. So we're gonna see what is our source information, what information are we gonna import. Let me bring over my spreadsheet. So this is the Excel file that we're gonna be ultimately importing. Now, the VBA wants to see CSV file. So if you have an Excel file, you will have to save it off as a CSV file. The three columns that we're gonna be working with are these three columns. We're ignoring the ID column at this point. Now you notice my columns have headers. The first row is a header. This is recommended because now I know which one is my northing, which one's my easting and my elevation. So we'll see that a little bit later, how the program can recognize that and make it easy for us to map things. So that's what we're gonna be importing. Let's move that to the side. So to get this going, we're gonna to go to my utilities tab, which I have rearranged a little bit so I can see my attributes tab. I pinned that to it. But under my macros, there's my VBA manager. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to go ahead and load my VBA. There it is, import points. Go ahead and close the VBA projects dialog. This is the VBA. In the upper left corner, this is where you select your source file, the CSV file. So I'm going to click on that. Now, I've already done this, so I can just look at my history right down here. So I'm going to choose from my history. Click open. You can see it comes in and you see the headers appear there, northing, easting, elevation. As I mentioned before, it's a good idea to label your headers. It makes it much easier at this point because you now know what's in that data. If you didn't have a header row, then it would show you the first value for that column. And that's going to show a value for a northing and an easting elevation. You would then have to determine which one was which. By labeling them, it makes it much easier. So now... We've got our source loaded in. Output two, in this example, we're just doing point, just as a zero length line. And when you choose this, it looks at your active attributes, my active level, color, style, and weight. In this case, color and weight are gonna be the important thing for us because we wanna have a weight of 10 so that when it places it, we see it clearly. To the right, you can see we have a settings button here. And this is going to be important because right now it thinks we're going to be loading in longitude, latitude, and elevation. We're not. We're doing northing and easting. So we need to change this setting. So you need to be mindful of this. So if I click on this, it brings up the settings and about. The first check is input file has header row. That's checked. And as I mentioned, if you've labeled your columns, your first row, it'll read that and it makes it much easier. The next one is if you were working with latitude, longitude, and elevation, you would check this box. We're not. So we're going to uncheck that. And you can see it changed to X, Y, and Z. Now we need to map this information over to here. You can simply drag and drop. Or if your naming convention here is recognizable, something like has an X in it or a northing, the program will recognize it, and you can use this button right down here, automatically mapping your header information to the output field. So now at this point, we have our attributes set. We've loaded our information. We've mapped it over here. We've told it the output. Now we're ready to go ahead and place it. Now what you'll see to the right, this is a top view. So when we place it, we're looking straight down. In view number two, over to the right, we have a front view, so you're going to see the elevation. So let's go ahead and click the place button. There they are, placed in. You can see all come in at color red, which is color three, and a weight of 10. And you notice here, you can see their elevations because we're looking at this in a front view. Let's go ahead and close the import points. Now we may want to change the appearance or color of these 
dots based upon their elevation. So I've set up a display rule that will do that for us. So if I go to my view attributes and I have two display styles that I've set up in this file, one's called point elevation on and one's called point elevation off. I'm going to show you how I did this. So I'm going to go to my display styles dialog for point elevation. You can see to the right, it says display rules and it's set to elevation. If I click on this pencil icon right here, this brings up the dialog that shows you how I set this up. What I did was I created a condition that said, look for an element, look for a line and look for its Z value. And if the Z value is anything from zero to 50 feet, make it this color, well, color 127 and make it weight eight. Then the next one is from 50 to 100, from 100 to 200. So I did this on increments of 100. So you see the color change as the elevation changes. So that's what this display rule is set to do. I'm going to close that. I'm going to go ahead and apply to view number one, this display style, double click, and you can see the color changes. Now I can also apply that to this view by just clicking here. You can see that the color of the points are changed based on the points Z value or elevation. So that's a way that will help you visualize your information based on elevation. If again, you have elevation. So hopefully you found this interesting. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.